Hello, welcome back to Meditating the Word. My name is Cherie. I'm your host and fellow traveler on this journey through the Bible in a year. Whether you've been reading the Bible for years, or if this is your first time to read it from Genesis to Revelation, I'm so glad to have you with us. We are in the eighth month of our journey, and we still have a lot of people to meet and places to visit. So let's jump into today's passage. This is day 217. Today we are reading 2 Kings 22 and 23 and 2 Chronicles 34 and 35. I'm reading from the World English Bible. Let's get started. The Second Book of Kings, Chapters 22 and 23. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned thirty-one years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jadida, the daughter of Adaiah of Bozkath. He did that which was right in the Lord's eyes, and walked in all the ways of David his father, and didn't turn away from the right hand or to the left. In the eighteenth year of King Josiah, the king sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, the scribe, to the Lord's house, saying, Go up to Hilkiah the high priest, that he may count the money which is brought into the Lord's house, which the keepers of the threshold have gathered of the people. Let them deliver it into the hand of the workers who have the oversight of the Lord's house, and let them give it to the workers who are in the Lord's house, to repair the damage to the house, to the carpenters and to the builders, and to the masons, and for buying timber and cut stone to repair the house. However, no accounting shall be asked of them for the money delivered into their hand, for they deal faithfully. Hilkiah the high priest said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the Lord's house. Hilkiah delivered the book to Shaphan, and he read it. Shaphan the scribe came to the king, and brought the king word again, and said, Your servants have emptied out the money that was found in the house, and have delivered it into the hands of the workmen, who have the oversight of the Lord's house. Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest has delivered a book to me. Then Shaphan read it before the king. When the king had heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. The king commanded Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam the son of Shaphan, Achbor the son of Micaiah, Shaphan the scribe, and Asaiah the king's servant, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all Judah, concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the Lord's wrath that is kindled against us, because our fathers have not listened to the words of this book to do according to all that which is written concerning us. So Hilkiah the priest, Ahikam, Achbor, Shaphan, and Asaiah went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tikva, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe, now she lived in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and they talked with her, and she said to them, The Lord, the God of Israel, says, Tell the men who sent you to me, the Lord says, Behold, I will bring evil on this place and on its inhabitants, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah has read, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the work of their hands. Therefore my wrath shall be kindled against this place, and it will not be quenched. But to the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of the Lord, tell him, The Lord, the God of Israel, says, concerning the words which you have heard, Because your heart was tender, and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I spoke against this place and against its inhabitants, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and have torn your clothes and wept before me. 
I also have heard you, says the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will gather you to your fathers, and you will be gathered to your grave in peace. Your eyes will not see all the evil which I will bring on this place. So they brought this message back to the king. The king sent and gathered to him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. The king went up to the Lord's house, and all the men of Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, with the priests, the prophets, and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the Lord's house. The king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments, his testimonies, and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul, to confirm the words of this covenant that were written in this book, and all the people agreed to the covenant. The king commanded Hilkiah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the threshold to bring out of the Lord's temple all the vessels that were made for Baal, for the Asherah, and for all the army of the sky. And he burned them outside of Jerusalem in the fields of the Kidron and carried their ashes to Bethel. He got rid of the idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places around Jerusalem. Also those who burned incense to Baal, to the sun, to the moon, to the planets, and to all the army of the sky. He brought out the Asherah from the Lord's house outside of Jerusalem to the brook Kidron and burned it at the brook Kidron and beat it to dust and cast its dust on the graves of the common people. He broke down the houses of the male shrine prostitutes that were in the Lord's house, where the women wove hangings for the Asherah. He brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense, from Geba to Beersheba. And he broke down the high places of the gates that were at the entrance of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city, which were on a man's left hand at the gate of the city. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places didn't come up to the Lord's altar in Jerusalem, but they ate unleavened bread among their brothers. He defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or daughter to pass through the fire to Molech. He took away the horses that the kings of Judah had dedicated to the sun at the entrance of the Lord's house by the room of Nathan Melech the officer who was in the court, and he burned the chariots of the sun with fire. The king broke down the altars that were on the roof of the upper room of Ahaz, which the kings of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasseh had made in the two courts of the Lord's house, and beat them down from there and cast their dust into the brook Kidron. The king defiled the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the mountain of corruption, which Solomon, the king of Israel, had built for Ashtoreth, the abomination of the Sidonians, and for Kamash, the abomination of Moab, and for Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon. He broke in pieces the pillars, cut down the Asherah poles, and filled their places with men's bones. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel, and the high place which Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, had made, even that altar and the high place he broke down, and he burned the high place and beat it to dust, and burned the Asherah, As Josiah turned himself, he spied the tombs that were there in the mountain, and he sent and took the bones out of the tombs and burned them on the altar and defiled it, according to the Lord's word, which the man of God proclaimed, who proclaimed these things. Then he said, What monument is that which I see? The men of the city told him, It is the tomb of the man of God who came from Judah, and proclaimed these things that you have done against the altar of Bethel. He said, Let him be. Let no one move his bones. 
So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet who came out of Samaria. All the houses also of the high places that were in the cities of Samaria, which the kings of Israel had made to provoke the Lord to anger, Josiah took away and did to them according to all the acts that he had done in Bethel. He killed all the priests of the high places that were there on the altars and burned men's bones on them, and he returned to Jerusalem. The king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover to the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of the covenant. Surely there was not kept such a Passover from the days of the judges who judged Israel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel nor of the kings of Judah, but in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, this Passover was kept to the Lord in Jerusalem. Moreover, Josiah removed those who had familiar spirits, the wizards and the teraphim and the idols and all the abominations that were seen in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem, that he might confirm the words of the law which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest had found in the Lord's house. There was no king like him before him who turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses. And there was none like him who arose after him. Notwithstanding, the Lord didn't turn from the fierceness of his great wrath with which his anger burned against Judah because of all the provocation with which Manasseh had provoked him. The Lord said, I will also remove Judah out of my sight, as I have removed Israel, and I will cast off this city which I have chosen, even Jerusalem, and the house of which I said, My name shall be there. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah, and all that he did, aren't they written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? In his days, Pharaoh Necho, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyria, to the river Euphrates, and King Josiah went against him. But Pharaoh Necho killed him at Megiddo when he saw him. His servants carried him dead in a chariot from Megiddo, brought him to Jerusalem, and buried him in his own tomb. The people of the land took Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, and anointed him and made him king in his father's place. Jehoahaz was twenty-three years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. He did that which was evil in the Lord's sight, according to all that his fathers had done. Pharaoh Necho put him in bonds at Riblah in the land of Hamath, that he might not reign in Jerusalem, and put the land to a tribute of one hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. Pharaoh Necho made Eliakim, the son of Josiah, king in place of Josiah his father, and changed his name to Jehoiakim. But he took Jehoahaz away, and he came to Egypt and died there. Jehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give the money according to the command of Pharaoh. He exacted the silver and the gold of the people of the land from everyone according to his assessment to give it to Pharaoh Necho. Jehoiakim was twenty-five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zabida, the daughter of Pedaiah of Rumah. He did that which was evil in the Lord's sight, according to all that his fathers had done. The Second Book of Chronicles, chapters 34 through 35. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned thirty-one years in Jerusalem. He did that which was right in the Lord's eyes, and walked in the ways of David his father, and didn't turn away to the right hand or to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of David his father, and in the twelfth year he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places, the Asherah poles, the engraved images, and the molten images." 
They broke down the altars of the Baals in his presence, and he cut down the incense altars that were on high above them. He broke the Asherah poles, the engraved images and the molten images in pieces, made dust of them, and scattered it on the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He burned the bones of the priests on their altars and purged Judah and Jerusalem. He did this in the cities of Manasseh, Ephraim, and Simeon, even to Naphtali, around in their ruins. He broke down the altars, beat the Asherah poles, and engraved images into powder, and cut down all the incense altars throughout all the land of Israel, then returned to Jerusalem. Now in the eighteenth year of his reign, when he had purged the land and the house, he sent Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, Maasaiah, the governor of the city, and Joah, the son of Joahaz, the recorder, to repair the house of the Lord his God. They came to Hilkiah, the high priest, and delivered the money that was brought into God's house, which the Levites, the keepers of the threshold, had gathered from the hands of Manasseh, Ephraim, and all the remnant of Israel, of all Judah and Benjamin, and of the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They delivered it into the hands of the workmen who had the oversight of the Lord's house. And the workmen who labored in the Lord's house gave it to mend and to repair the house. They gave it to the carpenters and to the builders to buy cut stone and timber for couplings and to make beams for the houses which the kings of Judah had destroyed. The men did the work faithfully. Their overseers were Jahath and Obadiah the Levites of the sons of Merari and Zechariah and Meshulam of the sons of the Kohathites to give direction, and others of the Levites, who were all skillful with musical instruments. Also, they were over the bearers of burdens, and directed all who did the great work in every kind of service. Of the Levites, there were scribes, officials, and gatekeepers. When they brought out the money that was brought into the Lord's house, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the Lord's law given by Moses. Hilkiah answered Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the Lord's house. So Hilkiah delivered the book to Shaphan. Shaphan carried the book to the king, and moreover brought back word to the king, saying, All that was committed to your servants, they are doing. They have emptied out the money that was found in the Lord's house, and have delivered it into the hand of the overseers, and into the hand of the workmen. Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest has delivered me a book. Shaphan read from it to the king. When the king had heard the words of the law, he tore his clothes. The king commanded Hilkiah, Ahikam the son of Shaphan, Abdon the son of Micah, Shaphan the scribe, and Asaiah the king's servant, saying, Go inquire of the Lord for me, and for those who are left in Israel and in Judah, concerning the words of the book that is found. For great is the Lord's wrath that is poured out on us, because our fathers have not kept the Lord's word to do according to all that is written in this book. So Hilkiah and those whom the king had commanded went to Huldah the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Takath, the son of Hazra, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she lived in Jerusalem in the second quarter, and they spoke to her to that effect. She said to them, The Lord, the God of Israel, says, Tell the men who sent you to me. The Lord says, Behold, I will bring evil on this place and on its inhabitants, even all the curses that are written in the book which they have read before the king of Judah because they have forsaken me and have burned incense to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore my wrath is poured out on this place, and it will not be quenched. But to the king of Judah who sent you to inquire of the Lord, you shall tell him this, The Lord, the God of Israel, says, about the words which you have heard, because your heart was tender, 
and you humbled yourself before God when you heard his words against this place and against its inhabitants, and have humbled yourself before me, and have torn your clothes and wept before me. I also have heard you, says the Lord. Behold, I will gather you to your fathers, and you will be gathered to your grave in peace. Your eyes won't see all the evil that I will bring on this place and on its inhabitants. They brought back this message to the king. Then the king sent and gathered together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. The king went up to the Lord's house with all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests, the Levites, and all the people, both great and small. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that was found in the Lord's house. The king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments, his testimonies, and his statutes with all his heart and with all his soul to perform the words of the covenant that were written in this book. He caused all who were found in Jerusalem and Benjamin to stand. The inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God, the God of their fathers. Josiah took away all the abominations out of all the countries that belonged to the children of Israel and made all who were found in Israel to serve, even to serve the Lord their God. All his days they didn't depart from knowing the Lord, the God of their fathers. Josiah kept a Passover to the Lord in Jerusalem. They killed the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month. He set the priests in their offices and encouraged them in the service of the Lord's house. He said to the Levites, who taught all Israel, who were holy to the Lord, Put the holy ark in the house which Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, built. It will no longer be a burden on your shoulders. Now serve the Lord your God and his people Israel. Prepare yourselves after your father's houses by your divisions, according to the writing of David, king of Israel, and according to the writing of Solomon, his son. Stand in the holy place, according to the divisions of the father's houses of your brothers, of the children of the people. And let there be for each a portion of a father's house of the Levites, Kill the Passover lamb, sanctify yourselves, and prepare for your brothers to do according to the Lord's word by Moses. Josiah gave to the children of the people of the flock, lambs, and young goats, all of them for the Passover offerings, to all who were present, to the number of thirty thousand and three thousand bulls. These were of the king's substance. His princes gave a free will offering to the people, to the priests, and to the Levites. Hilkiah, Zechariah, and Jehiel, the rulers of God's house, gave to the priests for the Passover offerings two thousand six hundred small livestock and three hundred head of cattle. Conaniah also, and Shemaiah, and Nathanael, his brothers, and Hashabiah, Jehiel, and Josabad, the chiefs of the Levites gave to the Levites for the Passover offerings five thousand small livestock and five hundred head of cattle. So the service was prepared, and the priests stood in their place, and the Levites by their divisions, according to the king's commandment. They killed the Passover lambs, and the priests sprinkled the blood which they received from their hands, and the Levites skinned them. They removed the burnt offerings that they might give them according to the divisions of the fathers' houses of the children of the people to offer to the Lord, as it is written in the book of Moses. They did the same with the cattle. They roasted the Passover with fire according to the ordinance. They boiled the holy offerings in pots, in cauldrons, and in pans, and carried them quickly to all the children of the people. Afterward, they prepared for themselves and for the priests, because the priests, the sons of Aaron, were busy with offering the burnt offerings and the fat until night. Therefore the Levites prepared for themselves and for the priests, the sons of Aaron. The singers, the sons of Asaph, were in their place, according to the commandment of David, 
Asaph, Haman, and Jeduthun, the king's seer. And the gatekeepers were at every gate. They didn't need to depart from their service, because their brothers, the Levites, prepared for them. So all the service of the Lord was prepared the same day to keep the Passover and to offer burnt offerings on the Lord's altar, according to the commandment of King Josiah. The children of Israel who were present kept the Passover at that time and the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days. There was no Passover like that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet, nor did any of the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah kept, with the priests, the Levites, and all Judah and Israel who were present, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. This Passover was kept in the eighteenth year of the reign of Josiah. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, went up to fight against Carchemish by the Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him, but he sent ambassadors to him, saying, What have I to do with you, you king of Judah? I come not against you today, but against the house with which I have war. God has commanded me to make haste. Beware, it is God who is with me, that he not destroy you. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself, that he might fight with him, and didn't listen to the words of Necho from the mouth of God, and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. The archers shot at King Josiah, and the king said to his servants, Take me away, because I am seriously wounded. So his servants took him out of the chariot, and put him in the second chariot that he had, and brought him to Jerusalem, and he died, and was buried in the tombs of his fathers. All Judah and Jerusalem mourned for Josiah. Jeremiah lamented for Josiah, and all the singing men and singing women spoke of Josiah in their lamentations to this day. And they made them an ordinance in Israel. Behold, they are written in the lamentations. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and his good deeds, according to that which is written in the Lord's law, and his acts, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. Father God, we thank you for your word. In it, you show us your heart. You show us your character. Even though we sin again and again, When we turn to you, you show us love and mercy. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness and your forgiveness. Amen. Well, there we have it, another chapter in our journey through the Bible. It isn't always easy to understand, but remember, it isn't a race, and each word we read is a seed planted in our hearts. Thank you for being part of this journey. Join us tomorrow and every day as we continue our journey through the pages of the Bible. This is Cherie signing off for the day. Remember, you are in my prayers. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.